Hey, everybody, I can have Ninja here. I hope you're doing well. I'm sorry about uh, doing multiple screen, you know, recording videos in a, in a row, but I want to get this information out to you as soon as possible. And if you are a female that understands what is going on in this world and that you need to prepare for not only higher prices, but supply chain shortages, honestly, this isn't the video I want to do, but the truth is the truth and we need to share this. So we're going to share this first because it's ladies first, but guys, I'm going to be talking about supply chain shortages. I'm going to be talking about upcoming, uh, uh, real serious trade wars with China that I believe are going to happen in the next six months and how that's going to affect you and what we need to buy now to prepare for this. Okay. So I don't want to sugarcoat this. This is a preparation video. Um, if you don't want to get prepared and you like being scared, then this is definitely not the video for you. I have some amazing cat videos. We'll try and link in this description below. Okay. So here we go. Let's find the video. Uh, here we go. All right. So we're going to start with this one. This uh, video is out of, or articles out of zero hedge. And it says, watch, now women can't get sanitary product products in Jeff Borgen's America. And just, you know, I understand it's pronounced that way, but uh, El Presidente Jeff Borgen, uh, because, you know, the only person I know that talks like that is Borgen, 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 Swedish chef from uh, the Muppets. Now, Jeff Borgen has been blaming um, Rutan for a long time. You know, it's Rutan's fault. Rutan ate my uh, homework. Rutan is the problem. You know, the problem is Borgen is always Rutan for another way to figure out how Rutan blamed all this, right? So he's, he's, he's blaming the Ukraine. But I think this is serious because, you know, you're very blessed when you prepare, right? When you prepare ahead of time, you see something happening, whether that be selling a house because you think the market's going to come tanking down. You sell some stocks. He's like, oh, you know what? I think this stock is overplayed. I think it's going to come crashing down or kind of be less. I sell, right? So when you're prepared with knowledge and then you do something about that and you wait it out and 90% of the time our gut is right, our gut feeling, we're blessed, all right? So this is a blessing to know this, right? Because I'm telling you right now, if you are either a lady that is watching this or you are a man that is married to a lady, it's crazy that I have to actually specify that these days. But uh, this is good information, right? Because you just simply go down to the store and pick something up. So here we go. We're going to talk about this. And again, guys, we're going to get into the the, the real uh, China situation. So it says already faced with having to wait for baby formula to be shipped in from the UK and Europe. American women are now struggling to get sanitary products in the latest embarrassing supply chain breakdown under Jeff Borgen. It says right here, uh, see a, a tweet that come out. Women are not only faced with baby supply shortage, but now tampons are in short supply. Um, it says right here, according to Nielsen IQ, the average cost of a box of tampons has ballooned by 10%, which I don't think that's a lot. And retailers are now jacking up prices, owning to shortages. It says New Hampshire senior Maggie Hassan addressed the issue Monday, writing to the CEO of Procter & Gamble, calling the situation very troubling and urging the manufacturer to deal with the situation. Meanwhile, NPR has relentlessly mocked has been relentlessly mocked for describing the tampon shortage as a problem for people who menstruate. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. I can't stand NPR. I think it is a, uh, a mouthpiece for the devil. I'm not joking. Um, and this right here is absolutely, this is yet one reason why you should never, ever, oh my gosh, I did not mean to open that up. Um, you should follow NPR. They're literally Satan's voice amplifier all right um but this is where we are and this is what is important right we want to care for our fellow man because we're all in this together and if we uh get ready for this this is a great blessing because the truth is only three percent are going to be ready right the one percent elite and the two percent of us ninja nation we're going to go out and crush it because we're going to be ready for it and then we're going to buy up everything else and so i would highly suggest you go and buy some right because what if there's no shortage what if this this doesn't happen right or really manifest i mean i i know it already is but let's just say it doesn't happen you know in your town well cool thing is if you buy them now and you just buy the next year's worth guess what you just locked in savings all right now we're going to dive into something called the business cycle i want to show you this chart right here and this is where we are falling right now because of oil prices. And this is going to tie into what's going on with China and uh, the world right now. So a business cycle, if you don't understand what it is, it's, it's as businesses grow and contract, right? They grow and contract with the health of an economy, all right? And we have ended the business cycle. And what is going to be taking out the business cycle is the price of energy. Because as the price of energy keeps rising, the margins of businesses are shrinking because businesses are constantly in competition with each other. And they're afraid they, to uh, raise their prices 
in fear of their competitor being cheaper and them losing customers, their competitor. Okay. For this is super, super basic. I'm going to do a better uh, uh, video on this here pretty soon. Um, but I wanted to share that because I think this is very important. So as you know, companies expand and they peak out, uh, we move into a recession. Now, what's interesting is uh, the government, we've been seeing rhetoric about uh, inflation not coming till 2023. I'm going to be honest with you. We went last quarter was uh, a surprise where we were supposed to grow. We had a po supposed to be having a positive GDP print and it went to negative. And that was shocking. It wasn't like it just fell a little bit. It went straight into negative territory. To sit there and, and lie, I, 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 I would be absolutely shocked, quite frankly, and I could be wrong. I'm wrong all the time. Uh, that we would not see a second quarter of negative GDP growth, uh, considering especially what's going on with the, the crashing of the markets, uh, rising interest rates, and rising fuel prices. All right. You can't tell me that, that oh, no, we'll have positive this, unless it's completely faked or they change the metrics and how the GDP is going to be calculated this time. I, I, mean, I want you guys to remember that you're seeing all these talking clowns on the mainstream going, oh, we won't have recession until next year. And I want to remind you guys, a lot of those talking clowns are from the Federal Reserve um, that we're not going to be dumping right now. Okay. So what that means is a lot of businesses are closing their doors right now. We're already seeing in the trucking industry. And again, trucking industry is relating 100% to the fuel price. All right. Uh, the fuel price is too high. And uh, not only that, you have shortages of certain materials. So you can't keep a truck running, right? So what's going to happen is going to be less companies to deliver the items to you. And there's going to be more and more uh, mom and pop stores that sadly go out of business um, because the uh, they're they're getting squeezed out too, right? So now here we've got something that's horrible coming up, and that is an invasion of uh, Taiwan by China. And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen is uh, the U.S. is going to not only sanction China, which is going to be whoo, it's going to get ugly. Um, we're also going to do the same thing where we say, hey, we're not going to buy their goods. Like we're not buying Russian oil only to find out that, yes, we're buying Russian oil. It just came off of a different ship, you know, um, but it's going to cause a lot of pain. So I've got a couple of things to show you. And just real quick, what kinds of products does the U.S. import from China? You know, machinery and electrical is 24 percent, miscellaneous 19, metals 10, textiles 8 and plastic and rubber 7. Well, that list doesn't tell you anything. You're like, well, what the heck? Are you saying ninja? I mean, what do I buy? Because that's what's important right now. Everyone's prepping. Everyone's getting ready for this. And the prepping community is blowing up because more and more people every day because of you guys that are hitting the thumbs up button, sharing the videos, getting the information out, more and more people are getting prepared, which is great, right? Because every person that gets prepared in our world, that's one last person that's going to be looting and rioting in the streets. Wouldn't you agree? And not only that, there's a lot more people that you know that are like you, like-minded people that are caring and compassionate and want to see this world change for the better. And we don't want any woke crap being shoved down our throats. We want to take back our world and uh, take it back from the people that caused all this in the first place. Wouldn't you agree? So I found this website and I wanted to share it with you. I thought it was really important, but I'm going to start with this paragraph right here, because this blog, I think, came out in 2014, and this is a 2020 update. It says, the blog below remains one of our most popular on the website, and there has been increased interest in it during the <laughs> uh, crisis. The United States, sorry if you're just listening to this little sidebar, um, I can't say the word out loud because they listen. And my point being is that I just want to get the point across. So if I scared you and you're driving, I apologize. Um, just hit the thumbs down button twice and I'll, I'll get the point. I won't do that again. Uh, it says the United States continues to import food from China, including 4.6 billion worth in 2017 alone. Top imports include fruits and vegetables, snack foods, spices, and teas. In 2019, for example, the U.S. imported 89 million worth of tea and 300 million worth of apple juice. Now, a couple things I want you to understand. Them just saying that this is one of the most uh, popular blogs on the website. Uh, is very important because that means a lot of people are looking at this. And this is a very old blog, all right? And they actually had to do an update. That's awesome. Another thing I want you to take away from this, you're probably going, well, wait a minute. We make a lot of apples, Ninja, a lot. Why are we importing them? Well, it's because governments figured out a long time ago, um, it's hard to tax your own people because they'll just rebel and put you in prison. Um, that, you know, like the like a tea party almost, the Boston Tea Party, um, even though I get it, it was another government. But my point being is that we were pretty much being run under one government at that point. And um, the reason why they found out is they go, well, you know what? If we could force our guys to export it, 
we can, they could sell for higher prices to another country, but they can also, because you don't want to get hit for racketeering or profiteering. So we can also charge tariffs. Yeah, let's do that. So we're actually taxing our own people and they have no clue. And that's, what's really sad about the U S ag industry um, is that the government is taxing you, even though you don't know it. Oh no, there's no tax on that food. I don't know. But you added a tariff, which actually increased the price. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. You know, it's like we're talking to Jeff Borgen all over again. So I want to show you this. It's really neat right here. Um, interlinked, interconnected food, U.S.-China food trade. Okay, so we're talking about when people ask me all the time, well, what do we do? How do I prepare? You know, and I'm going to put the link to this in the um, uh in the description of the video. So you guys, if you guys want to subscribe to this, you know, and 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 get more information, uh, and it's the Alliance for American Manufacturing. I love that. Um, check this out. So your cell phone is made in China, right? But what about your baked tilapia dinner? So everybody knows, yeah, my, my, my cell phone's made in China, right? It starts right here. China is the largest foreign market for U.S. food and agriculture products, right? 20% of all U.S. agriculture exports. That is huge, right? Um, now, this is uh, $28.8 billion worth of exports in 2013. Again, I told you this is going to be low, but these numbers have actually increased. And it's increased uh, 854% from 2002 to 2011, right? So it says, what do China pe Chinese people buy from the U.S.? Now, again, we're going backwards, right? Because I want you to see how much stuff we're pushing over to them right now. This is, this is old, okay? Soybeans, $13 billion. Cotton, $2 billion. Uh, brewing, uh, or distilling, uh, what is it, dregs or waste, and waste, uh, 1.4 billion. Wheat, corn, edible chicken and pig parts. We've been talking about that, right? We send a lot of our stuff over that if it was staying here, we would save money. And the sad thing is, I believe what we're about to experience is a lot of things that China sends us that we're not going to get because when they move into t Taiwan, it's going to be like the big rhetoric on the news, like, oh, you can't, um, uh, you can't, uh, you know, we can't buy from China. So everything here is going to explode in price. Well, it says right here, do you know where your vitamin C comes from? How about a glass of apple juice or that tilapia you ordered at dinner the other night? Chances are all three came from China, along with importing plenty of electronic products, clothing and other manufactured goods in the United States imported roughly 3.9 billion pounds of agricultural products from China in 2010 alone. And guys, this is getting bigger, making it the second largest market for goods. Now, I want to explain something, because, again, this is 2010. This has actually gotten larger than this. OK, that's what's important that you understand. And just because we produce a lot of. Um, uh, products ourselves, especially agriculture products, you can't just turn, flip the switch and go, okay, we're just going to buy from ourselves now. The reason why is because the manufacturer of those products, especially like produce, let's say, that are being shipped to another country, they're being packaged and sent to another country in a certain type of package. It's totally different to like have it ready for consumption in this country. You just can't flip that switch on. So, and if we need to, let's say a time of war happens, we go, hey, we're going to stop importing stuff from China. We're going to start, set, you know, we're only relying on our stuff. It takes a long time for companies to tool up is a term in the industry, meaning they have to purchase the right manufacturing products or equipment to be able to manufacture or package their goods for sale of consumption in this country. And so it can't be done just overnight. It could take months. And in those months, what are you going to do? And it sounds funny. I give the example of razors, disposable razors. If you use disposable razors, which I'm sure I'll get a ton of subscribers that are going, or not subscribers. Subscribers are awesome. Uh, the non-subscribers are like, I don't use those. I use this. I'm like, okay, copy. But you do know you're not the only guy on the planet. All right. There's guys that use disposable razors. All right. I'm one of them. I use them. So the question is, where did it come from? Well, I know mine came from China. So, hey, I got an idea. Right before this thing happens, why don't I just go out and buy myself a case of razors, right? It does last me a year, right? Just set them off to the side. And I don't have to use those right now. Cool thing is they don't got an expiration date. You use them 10 years from now, and they're still going to be just as sharp. And I'll just keep buying the ones that I normally buy. And then the day they go, oh, those things doubled in price. I'm like, oh, okay, I'll just bust into that case. Super, super simple, right? I use that example all the time. That's how easy it is to prepare. A lot of people tell me all the time, I go, I don't have money to prepare. I'm like, you do. 
And I'm going to give you a quote that I literally heard from an Alaskan prepper, another YouTuber, a uh, great guy, really nice. He's been such a blessing to my channel. He's thrown out uh, my name, this channel a lot. As a matter of fact, many of you guys um, probably subscribe to him. Why don't you throw a, a shout out to him in one of his videos or, or let, let me know in the comments what you think about him. Cause I'm sure you, I won't see one negative comment about Alaskan prepper, the YouTube channel. And, um, you know, he, he gave a great analogy for those that couldn't get ready. He said, you know, it's like a, a, a pot, a dripping faucet that's just dripping. He goes, if you were to put a pot under that, will it fill up? He goes, yes, it will eventually. And it's the same way you need to look at being prepared. You know, people are like, I don't have the money for this. Why are you acting like that? It's because you're in a panic. You finally figured out what's going on and you've got to act. You've got to act now. It doesn't mean you need to go out and buy, you know, a generator, a lightsaber and, you know, a, a, a samurai sword to go running around the woods to go and, you know, kill your own buffalo. Um, and hopefully you're not trying to kill buffalo in California. You won't find a whole lot of them. As a matter of fact, I actually live near one of the herds. Um, but my point being is this. Uh, you put that, when you have a little bit, you're like, I only have $5. I only have $10. And if you say you don't have $10 and I find out you got a Netflix subscription, we'll have words, okay? But um, honestly, you put that pot underneath and it starts dripping $10 at a time, each drop, another $10 of preparedness, another thing of ramen noodles, uh, drip, drip, another thing of uh, canned beans or a bag of beans or a bag of lentils. Those are really easy to cook, right? And what happens is you, you fill up a little five gallon can bucket and you put a lid on it. You set that off into a nice cool place in your house and then start filling up another bucket or a, a Rubbermaid bin. And before you know it, drip, drip, drip. And that pot fills up with water. Alaskan Prepper, you are awesome. That was a great analogy. And I didn't want to steal it from you. I want to give you credit because you deserve the credit for that. It's a great analogy. We can all get prepared. And I, I want you to give him a shout out. He is such a neat guy, honestly. And that's the, the great thing about all of you. If you've made it this far in this video, I'm not joking. I don't care how rich you are, how poor you are, where you are in your life. If you've had rough times, your family has left you, you've had really hard times. I want to tell you right now, you're a blessing. You're not only a blessing to the world, you're a blessing to me because you care more about what's going on than just yourself. And true, you know, everybody prepares uh, somewhat for selfish reasons. I do because I want to go crush it and get even richer, right? I mean, honestly, that's what we want to do. But I also want to help people. I want to help people with information, knowledge, but I also want to be able to feed people. And there's going to be a lot of people that need to be fed. And guess what? We're going to be able to turn more people around. Call me a romantic at heart, but I think this is going to be magnanimous. <laughs> Diego, what? I don't think you know what that word actually means. Sorry, guys. If you know what movie that's from, please put it in the comment section below. Now, um, lastly, I want to go over this really quick. So right here, labels and a lack of transparency may be the reason health safety has gotten lost in the back and forth between China and the U.S., Last year, and again, this wasn't last year, it was a long time ago, 10 years ago, last year, the United States Department of Agriculture, or the USDA, allowed processed chicken to be exported from China, but this has spiraled into confusion over where food is made, and regulation has become lost in the process. Members also looked into the safety of pet treats imported from China, which have been blamed for the death of more than a thousand dogs. Now, with that being said, we have a very serious crisis going on with pork. You uh, saw the video that I put in. Uh, a couple of days ago, where the nation's largest pork uh, processing facility uh, just announced they're about to close their doors. And also, I believe the third or fourth largest in the nation, it decided to close their doors as well. Same company. That is going to be catastrophic because that is going to send the cost of pork soaring. But I want to explain this to you. And if you made it to the end of the video, I think this is a big deal. I believe I was talking to Jack at Nobody Special Finance here today, and he says, you know what that's going to do? That's going to cause processed packaged pork to explode in price in the grocery store, but it will cause the price of hogs before they've been slaughtered to plummet in price. And I go, tell me that again. And he goes, well, think about it. If farmers don't have anywhere to bring their pork, their, their hogs, they're going to sell them for so much less. He goes, and China has a massive problem on their hands. They've been killing millions and millions of pigs because of a swine flu epidemic for the last couple of years. I'm like, yeah, you're right. I know about that. And he goes, think about it. Think about how cheap those pigs are going to get, those hogs. And now China all of a sudden has to do is go, hey, we'll buy all your pigs at the going rate, the collapse price, and we'll process them in our country. So we'll ship them over on ship and process them here because those pigs do not have the swine flu. My mouth dropped and I go, oh my gosh, this is economic war at its finest. 
Guys, I thank you so much for watching this video. Thank you so much for all the thumbs up. You are the reason why this channel is a success, not me. I can't wait to meet every single one of you. I'm not joking. I'm going to be, I'm still, I'm traveling the country meeting you guys, and I have an amazing time doing it. With that being said, guys, the Economic Ninja is out.